Dolphins have always been fascinating. These extraordinary sea mammals with their always funny faces are among the most popular animals in the whole world. But what is behind the myth of the extraordinary intelligence of these animals? How smart are they really? Is it even possible that they have a human-like personality? The abilities of dolphins and other toothed whales are often reduced to what is shown in dolphinariums and other animal shows, jumping out of the water and fin clapping on command. But in reality, these creatures possess a complex social network and also an extraordinary empathy for other creatures and situations. There are even researchers who credit the dolphins with intellectual and social abilities close to human level. How much of this is true remains to be seen, but according to the current state of science, one thing is already certain. Dolphins have far more skills than most of us give them credit for. Many myths regarding these animals are not only true, but even downplay the facts of reality. Each year, research results amaze the world because of our never-ending fascination for dolphins, even with questionable TV shows such as Flipper being long off the air. It's their trusting and positive nature which makes them so interesting for so many people. Participating in dolphin therapy and swimming, diving or snorkeling with dolphins are right at the top of many people's wish lists. But how do the animals feel about all this? Together with Dr. Carsten Brensing, one of the most renowned researchers in the field of whales and dolphins and a staff member of the International Whale and Dolphin Conservation Society, WDC, we will approach these issues. We'll unravel the myths surrounding the dolphins and dare to take a deep look inside the personality of these extraordinary creatures. We distinguish between baleen whales and toothed whales, and when most people think of whales, they think of baleen whales, which are the largest whale species. Sea mammals are animals well adapted to life in the water. Aside from whales, this species also features seals, manatees, and sea otters. The whales are separated into two specific kinds, the toothed whales and the baleen whales. The group of toothed whales includes the following species. The sperm whales, beaked whales, monodontidae or white beluga, porpoises, dolphins and river dolphins. One of the most famous dolphins is the grambus, also called orca or killer whale which a lot of people don't recognize as a dolphin. Other popular dolphins are the bottle-nosed dolphin and the common dolphin. The orca dolphins are easy to spot because of their imposing size and their black and white color scheme. The common dolphin was the most famous dolphin before the global boom of dolphinariums in the 70s and 80s. He is about 2 to 2.5 meters tall and has a white belly. At long last, we have the bottlenose dolphin, which became famous thanks to the flipper show and the massive keeping in dolphinariums. It is a very tall animal, which can grow as long as 4 meters and weigh up to 600 kilograms. The reason it is so often used in animal shows and films is not its appearance, but its extremely high intelligence. The bottlenose dolphin is simply referred to as a dolphin, although it only belongs to a subspecies of the dolphins. 
Aber es gibt auch ein paar Zahnwale. There are also a few real big toothed whales. For example, the orca, who is considered to be a whale, although he is a dolphin, is a toothed whale as well as the pot whale, although he is quite big too. But the distinction is important because the balin whales are filter feeders, meaning they eat small things out of the water. They filter the water with their balin plates, which are comb-like braids. And the toothed whales, which are hunters, are carnivores. In the wild, a dolphin can eat up to 20 kilograms of fish per day. That is one hell of an appetite, at least compared to sharks who have to consume less food. All dolphins are toothed whales, which means they have a set of teeth similar to terrestrial predators. Depending on their subspecies, they have only a few teeth, or up to 250 teeth. The bottlenose dolphin, which is the one seen in the flipper show and in most dolphinariums, has around 100 knife-sharp pointed teeth for hunting. This kind of dolphin is shaped like a shark, so it can speed through the oceans and kill its prey. At the end of our ocean's food chain, what counts are the right physical conditions and the intelligence to hunt successfully for food. Compared to mankind, dolphins have a very large brain with the most complex cortex on our planet. Brain researchers agree that we have to assume an extraordinary intelligence here. The dolphin's neocortex is heavily folded. This is the area of the brain which controls complex mental processes and self-confidence. In addition, there is another exciting organ in the head of the dolphins, the melon, or the so-called third eye. There, the ultrasound gets bundled. This sonar-like system allows the dolphins to locate objects, other living beings, or dangers at a distance of several hundred meters. And that's not all. This sonar has another fantastic feature. It can see the baby of a pregnant woman, similar to X-ray vision. Therefore, dolphins in the wild are often fascinated by pregnant female swimmers. Dolphins are actually distributed on our whole planet. They're found in the higher latitudes and also in the tropical areas. The only areas that are currently being shunned by them are those where people are particularly active. Of course, different dolphin species are present in different areas, depending on how they adapt themselves to the area. For example, the bottlenose dolphin, which is the dolphin which we know today as the typical dolphin, because we see him in dolphinariums and in the media, lives even in the North Sea. There are some of them who are particularly large, and thus they also have a very good thermal insulation and are easily one to two meters bigger than the other ones in the Caribbean. It is easy to pin down the living areas of dolphins because they exist everywhere where temperature and food resources allow it. Our world is divided into the following major marine areas, the Atlantic, the Pacific and the Indian Ocean. The different types of dolphin appear in various frequency on our blue planet. The bottlenose dolphin is the one with the highest population in our seas. According to estimates, there are about 600,000 animals living in all areas. Then, we have the great orca, which is spread over almost all marine areas, with an average life expectancy of 50 years, sometimes even up to 80 years. A sad example is the Amazon River dolphin, which only lives in the Amazon area. According to unconfirmed estimates, there are only a few thousand animals left.
In general, one can say there's one dolphin per 10,000 people, the number of inhabitants of a small town. Once again, you can see here the most important species of dolphins and their ranges shown in different colors. Of course, dolphins live where there is food. When you find a lot of food, you find a lot of dolphins. However, there is a rather disturbing fact in this context. It has been proved that people take away the food of some dolphin species. That means our fishing and the overfished sea cause the extinction of some animals or even whole populations, such as the population of dolphins in Greece and just because we ate their food. Us humans expel the animals out of their habitat, although current research shows that they are not only extremely intelligent, but also very important for our ecosystem. Of course, in the past, science was interested in the cognitive abilities of dolphins and learned more and more during that progression of the last years. And a very important test is the test for self-recognition. This self-recognition test works pretty easy with a mirror. Once you can prove the animals are able to recognize themselves in a mirror, then the biology of behavior acts on the assumptions that these animals do have a self-awareness. Only a few animals have that. The self-recognition test with the mirror is perhaps something of a holy grail in behavioral biology. It was constantly changed and improved in the past, as it was realized that not every animal can pass the test. The test used to be done with monkeys, and when apes do have a spot on the forehead and mention that when looking into a mirror, they can scratch at that spot. Of course, a dolphin or a magpie simply cannot scratch themselves, so you had to come up with another test. That was done, and in the case of dolphins, it was paid attention to how they deal with that spot. They succeeded as their behavior was watched precisely and different situations had been compared. For example, at one time they had a spot, at the other time none. The dolphins got a spot, or sometimes just a touch, without setting a spot. Then they swam to the mirror, and those with a spot looked much longer at themselves. And this was the proof that they recognized themselves with the spot. The dolphin who just swims to the mirror and recognizes no spot, just is aware of, OK, I was just touched, is not interested in that spot anymore and swims away. But the fact that the animals swam to the mirror and looked a certain time at the spot is the proof that they have a self-awareness. Just as the big apes, they do have an interest in their own body and do mention if something is not OK with their body and can also decide whether they have to be worried or not. Animals can react to the mirrors in a variety of manners. For example, one reaction is to ignore the mirror completely. My dog can pass a mirror without any interest. The mirror simply does not smell like a dog and is therefore totally uninteresting. Then there is another behavior which we call social behavior. That means the counterpart in the mirror is seen as a conspecific. Here, a certain aggression can take part. Territorial fish, for example, attack a mirror again and again because they think there is a rival. Giving a bird in a cage a mirror makes him feel better and not so alone anymore as he recognizes another bird in the mirror. But that doesn't mean that an animal is recognizing itself. So. The rouge test, the test with the spot, is used to clear that. What this test is all about is to prove an animal does not only show social behavior, but really recognizes itself and acts appropriately. With the mirror test, researchers test whether animals have self-awareness. All kinds of different reactions and results come out of this. Dogs, for example, ignore the mirror because dogs perceive their world with their nose. Since a mirror just does not smell like a dog, it's not of interest to them. P. 
pigs, on the other hand, can use the mirror to find food, even though they don't recognize themselves in the mirror. They use the mirror like us humans use a rear view mirror in a car. Many birds and fish see the mirror as a member of the same species who is located in front of them. Sometimes their reaction is aggressive and territorial when seeing their own mirror image. Other animals such as elephants, monkeys and dolphins perceive themselves as they recognize the set marking on their body and try to look at it with the help of a mirror or try to remove it. Just as humans react accordingly when they see a stain on their shirt. One could interpret this as vanity. but it certainly counts as consciousness about the outward appearance. Was uns Verhaltensbiologen we behavioral biologists are certainly very interested in how far the animals are able to think strategically and if they can adapt to different new situations. Exciting was that we found a lot of examples in the free nature. There are different strategies in hunting which are passed from one generation to the next one. That means animals are able to think strategically and to adapt. Then we had experiments, really easy ones, to test that. One of them was to demonstrate a dolphin that had to pick up three weights in a pool and therefore will get a fish. So he had to pick up these three items, put them in a box and then got a fish. A diver demonstrated that and afterwards the dolphin just did it himself. Now the experiment was changed a little bit. The three weights were put far away from the fish box and what did the dolphin do? He acted like the diver before and picked up every item separately and put it in the box. What this experiment was all about was, will the dolphin be smart enough to pick up all three items at once? And that's what he did. He swam to them, took all three weights together, went back and saved time. There are several experiments to test in a quite simple way if one is able to think and act reasonably, strategically and tactically. A question asked by scientists more often in recent times is what makes us different from animals? Language, social interaction and economic foresight are no longer exclusive domains of humans. What is certainly interesting for people is are dolphins able to talk to each other? There are some bizarre experiments. In the 70s, for example, a scientist founded a flat share with dolphins. He flooded a house, placed some people and dolphins in there and tried to teach the dolphins English. Of course, that didn't work. Dolphins are not able to speak English, but they do have a complex way of communication. It is that complex that we don't understand it yet. What we do understand is easy to describe and again with some quite simple experiments. For example, you can teach a dolphin to understand human language. That worked quite well with big apes by teaching them the human sign language. Dolphins were taught a modification of that so that the animals learned an abstract language, a sign language. 
It was possible to present that so far that in the end only two white gloves in front of a black background were moved and dolphins were able to interpret that in an abstract way and to understand it as information and command. And due to those experiments it was found out that these animals have a. a certain idea of space and b. a certain idea of time. Because it was possible to tell them, first go there and pick this up and then bring it to this or that place. Therefore, it was easy to prove that the animals do have an idea of space and time. The current status of research, social research of dolphins, did lead a group of scientists to get together. And that group decided, based on the knowledge we do have now, to ask for something like a personal security for whales and dolphins. Their argument is that the animals are obviously, and this is proved by the experiments, evolved that far that dolphins and whales have to be considered as people. That means they have an idea of themselves, others, a perspective of life, memories of their life and a history. And they do have the possibilities to think strategically and so on. Those scientists who got together do support the idea that we have to also give judicial rights to those animals. The current status of research made some scientists get together and think about the question whether we could consider when talking about whales and dolphins to talk about people. Do these animals comply with all the characteristics of a person? And the scientists concluded yes. And then they proclaimed the so-called Helsinki Declaration, which can be signed. In this declaration, the scientists claim to give animals the same rights which are endorsed and granted to human beings. In Germany, you can support this idea. Just click the website voltrecht.de and there you can subscribe to the Helsinki Declaration and support the idea to actually treat animals in a fair way. The obvious fun we have when interacting with dolphins, unfortunately, isn't always present on both sides. The animals always have a smile on their faces, but that's only because they don't have the facial expressions of humans and therefore cannot make a sad face when feeling bad. Thus, it is even more important to pay attention to other signals of the animals to understand what they want from us. We know from the past we know from the past that people have been rescued by dolphins. Those examples can be found in history back to ancient Greece. And still today, we find instances for that again and again. Of course, the fascinating question is, why do they do it? And in fact, we do have an answer. Due to experiments and studies, we know that dolphins own something like a theory of mind. That is the term for the ability to understand that there are other creatures with self-awareness. And this ability to put oneself into someone else's position makes dolphins recognize if somebody is in need. That means they recognize the emergency and tend to help of their own accord. Just like people, we put a chick fallen out of a nest back into it. And that is the reason why they help people. They recognize our emergency and just want to be helpful. Interessanterweise gibt es auch den umgekehrten Fall. Interestingly, it can happen the other way round. Dolphins come to people and ask them for help. There was an example, an incident, in 2012, when a dolphin swam to a group of divers and let them free him from a fishing net. That means the dolphin understood, I have a problem, I am caught, and I can't go on like this, and there is a group of divers who can help me. 
They have knives and are able to free me. And in fact, the diver with his sharp knife was allowed to come very close to the dolphin, a wild dolphin, and cut him out of the fishing net. Someone had an underwater camera, and therefore this was documented very well. This is a fairly impressive example for an interaction, and the animals know in reverse we can also help them. In the end, I'm truly confused, and I'm not the only one, that we have to consider some animal species as people. And if we consider these animals as people, as they fulfill all the characteristics we expect from an individual, we simply have to treat them as a person. That means we should not be allowed anymore to confine them or kill them at random, because we want to eat them. These are questions I deal with in my book, and I really hope that I was able to express that message in a concrete and entertaining way. And I do hope that those people who read the book will have a better understanding of the way animals think. If we would consider those few animal species as an artificial person, then of course it would mean that people were not allowed to kill these animals. We would not be allowed to confine them, and actually, we would also not be allowed to take their territory. That means a sanctuary for animals would have a completely different status. At the moment, sanctuaries in free nature just mean that we won't endanger the population. In fact, the population is managed. As long as I do not endanger the population, I'm allowed to kill even highly protected animals. That would not be possible anymore if the animals were seen as people. Then you would kill a person, and that is a judicial crime. Such a decision would have a massive effect on the coexistence of man and dolphin, which would forbid any further use of animals for shows. The question now is, do we really need dolphinariums, or are there other ways to interact with these intelligent creatures? Ways which would benefit man and dolphin alike? Based on my own experience, and I worked in a dolphinarium and sea enclosure for years, in my opinion, nobody should visit a dolphinarium in principle as we would only support the keeping of dolphins in an appropriate environment. And from my point of view, those animals actually are not allowed to be kept. And there's one more reason. Considering that the animals are seen as people, we have no right at all to capture them and lock them away for their entire life. If we talk about keeping dolphins in a species-appropriate environment, we have to distinguish, are we talking about a dolphinarium or a sea enclosure? Very often, sea enclosures are much bigger and without any concrete walls. Sometimes there are also other fish, and it could be questioned that a sea enclosure would be an appropriate environment. I believe dolphinariums are not species appropriate. The animals do not have the free moving space as in the great outdoors at all, and in dolphinariums the dolphins are not kept under normal social conditions. Strictly speaking, their social life is stolen from them, and there are only a few animals living together, and an exchange is not possible. From studies in nature, we do know that dolphins have a very complex social life. We know, for example, that dolphin calves already live a social life. They have about 20, 30 or 40 friends, and they're in contact with a lot of grown-up dolphins from whom they learn. That learning process and the complex of experience they pass through in their youth in free nature, including the exchange with many other dolphins, is completely taken away from them. This causes the animals to not find their normal social partners as they do in the outdoors. In the case of male dolphins, it will be other males. They live together with other males, now they don't find them, and this leads to aggression in captivity. And that leads to medicating the animals with attractics and hormones. And in my opinion, if they have to be medicated like this, this is a clear signal that they are not kept species appropriate. If you now give a thought to whether the animals can be treated better and more species appropriate in an outdoor enclosure, then, in my experience, we have to deny that. 
as even there, it does not work to form a solid social group. When males become older, they have to be separated from the group, as this situation always leads to aggression. In the outdoors, the animals can swim away. If one day there could be such a big enclosure that the animals can swim that far away to avoid aggression, then I might discuss if they were kept species appropriate in those outdoor enclosures. During my dissertation, I was engaged in dolphin therapy, as it was a form of interaction between dolphins and people, which I analyzed. I have to confess that at the beginning of my research, I was very committed, motivated, and excited, as I thought something really great can be watched here. But my own perceptions convinced me it was the very reverse. And finally, that made me today a critic of dolphin therapy. And I do think patients should not be advised to go there, as there are actually better places they can go for help. Nicht raten sollte, dorthin zu gehen, denn sie sind eigentlich anders besser versorgt. For example, there is an umbrella association of therapists who work with the help of animals, and dolphin therapists are not admitted, as by their definition, therapies only should be done with domesticated animals, and that makes sense. For generation after generation, domesticated animals have been bred to be close to people. Some animals like the closeness, some need it. Just think about our dogs. Therapy with wild animals is something different. Basically, wild animals dread people, although it can happen in the sea that a curious dolphin comes close to us and is watching us, he would never swim several times a day to people, he just would not do it. He would stay away. And I think for those animals which are involved in dolphin therapy, it is a disaster. First of all, they are cut off from their normal life. They have to do something they would never do by choice, and that is the reason why therapies are done with the fish as a reward system. Every interaction between the patient and the dolphin is rewarded with fish. This is the reason for many therapists working with animals saying, actually, dolphin therapy cannot work, as it's very important for a therapy that the animal and the patient develop a bond and a relationship. With dolphin therapy, the only interaction happens between the dolphin and the trainer, instead of the patient. The dolphin only does what the trainer tells him and gets some fish for it. That is why there actually is no therapy at all. There are different views about the dolphin therapy and whether the animals are suitable for the therapy of humans at all. Research is being conducted in both directions, but up to now there are no clear results or a recognition by the Medical Council or Health Insurance. Unfortunately, there are far too many black sheep who offer supposed therapies only to the chagrin of the animals. In opposition to our pets, dogs, horses or other production animals like cows, for example, dolphins are not domesticated, which means they were not bred to be close to people. It still is a wild animal, and therefore we cannot expect to interact with the dolphin on the same level as with a domesticated animal. That means there will be no comparable interaction with a dolphin. There are some exceptions. There are dolphins living alone, so-called solitaire dolphins, who live close to the shore and often come quite close to people. I would call those animals the hermits amongst the dolphins, because they do not live typically. 
They do not live the life a normal dolphin would live. But they come close to us. By mistake, we think that all the dolphins are like them, as we know them very well and are able to watch them often. This is a mistake. They are not like this. If we realize one day that our knowledge has come that far, that certain actions we take are immoral, compared with our moral concept, then we must change our attitude. Us humans are radically exploiting the dolphins and therefore pushing them to the brink of extinction. Furthermore, we are also more than careless with our nature and all corresponding forms of life. We have to understand that the ocean with all its creatures is also important for our survival on this planet. A few years ago, I was invited to join a camera team who made a story regarding dolphin therapy in Turkey. To keep the report as objective as possible, I didn't go there as a dolphin expert, but as a cameraman. As a cameraman, I was in the water and filmed underwater. And I filmed belugas. To see these animals underwater was, in connection with whales and dolphins, the most emotional and profound moment I have ever experienced. The reason was, the animals were young, three or four years old, and they had been there for one year. Which means they've been taken away from their mother as puppies. These animals came from Russia, and Russian conservationists told me their mothers have been killed to catch the puppies. So, these animals I saw there had been caught in the Russian White Sea. Their mothers have been killed, and now they were there to be part of a dolphin therapy and to help and heal our human children. And what made it even worse was the fact that one trainer told me they starved the animals to avoid too much blubber. These animals' blubber grows quite fast as they live in the polar circle. They are climatized to a life in cold water, and their whole organism is adapted to be isolated. The animals got only a little food to avoid the blubber and to survive in the summer-like 27 to 30 degrees warm water as long as possible. This was very disillusioning for me, and frankly, when I got out of the water, I had tears in my eyes. But I was not allowed to show it, or my cover would have been blown then. But that was tough. Currently, the top priority for all dolphin researchers and whale protectors is the preservation of the habitat of these animals. We should all help to ensure that these habitats survive. It is important to only support projects or activities which are morally convincing, so that in the future, animals no longer have to suffer from our activities. One of the most exciting aspects is the fact that dolphins do have something similar to names. When thinking of a person, I think of a person with a name. That is a casual connection. Dolphins do have names. They have a so-called identification whistle. In the first weeks after their birth, they learn this whistle, and first it sounds like the whistle of their mother. Then the whistle changes a little bit and becomes characteristic. The animals keep their own whistle their whole life. There are exceptions. We made observations of male dolphins who changed their name after getting together with another male. 
To understand that, you have to know that male dolphins do have a kind of partnership, lasting their whole life. Their names merge, and finally they do have only one common whistle. But just the fact that they need names in their social life shows us how complex this social life is. And the ability to talk about others clarifies some observations we made in the outdoors. The name is communicated by the whistle and is only assigned to one animal. This is almost unique in the world of mammals. There is only one other mammal with the same ability, the man. Now, dolphin and man cannot be directly compared, but since we are in a more powerful position than the dolphins, we must help to protect them. Fishing still is the biggest danger for dolphins and whales. Hundreds and thousands of animals perish yearly in fishing nets. In the past, tuna fishing was criticized and held responsible, but it's not all about that. It's the entire fishing industry. Germany is not a very positive example, as we nearly killed off the East Sea porpoise, which is a genetic separated population from the North Sea porpoise. There are only a few hundred animals left, and if we don't take care, the porpoise will die off. And that happened eventually only because some hobby fishermen practice gill net fishing. This is a clear case for politicians. Another aspect is the noise pollution. Humans communicate by sound through the air, and underwater creatures do the same through the more dense medium of water. As every diver knows, you can hear remarkably well underwater. It is surprising how well you can hear a boat going by somewhere in the distance. The same goes for tipping your fingers against a scuba tank. But our hearing is not specialized in hearing underwater, as opposed to the hearing of whales and dolphins. For them, the sea has become incredibly noisy. Some of the noise sources, such as ships, air guns used for the search of oil and gas, or military actions, can hurt or even permanently destroy the hearing of the animals. The results are disorientation and the stranding of confused animals on our shores. The sound waves the animals are radiating are interrupted by other sources of noise and therefore don't reach their target. For some whale species, which are able to communicate over thousands of kilometers in calm waters, their communication is now limited to only a few kilometers. Therefore, groups of animals can no longer locate each other underwater. Come mating season, this is especially bad for these animals because they cannot find a suitable partner anymore. For many whales already facing dwindling population, this becomes more and more of a problem. Unfortunately, the amount of noise is increasing every year. If we don't act now, the resulting consequences can become very serious. We müssen dafür sorgen, dass sich Wale und Delfine we have to make sure that whales and dolphins are able to orientate themselves underwater, to make sure they can communicate with each other. The communication area of blue whales contracted from about 1,000 kilometers to 100 kilometers. That means the animals cannot find each other anymore. And there are other activities, for example, caused by shipping. Ships cause very low noises, and whales communicate within that range. Another aspect is the search for mineral oil and natural gasoline, as very loud so-called air guns are used. They are loud enough to destroy the animal's hearing. And if we don't stop these things from continuing at the same level we are now, then we have a problem for the animals.
Ich habe vor einigen Jahren die Wissenschaft. A few years ago, I did the scientific guidance for a movie with Mario Adolf, and the movie was about whales and whale protection. We filmed in South Africa. And what I liked most was the moment when we went for whale watching and the animals came close to our boat. On one side, it was extremely exciting to be there with Adolf and to see such a gigantic animal emerge out of the water just next to us. On the other, I had a good feeling and did not feel guilty, as whale watching is regulated and very well organized in South Africa. There is always only one boat at a time in the bay, and there is almost no other population of whales which has recovered as good as the population of the southern right whales, which we saw in South Africa. To see the complete setting was very satisfying for me, and I really did enjoy it very much. The dolphin reminds us that the search for other intelligent life in the universe has to start right here on Earth. Understanding the complex nature and language of animals has been a dream of many scientists for decades. But as long as it is allowed to exploit the animals, an approach is difficult to achieve. India was the first country worldwide to recognize dolphins as individuals and to prohibit the keeping of dolphins in dolphinariums. In an official statement, the Indian government refers to the so-called Helsinki Declaration, in which a number of prominent researchers demand a non-human person status for whales and dolphins. This is the first step to allow all animals here on our planet a better life and the protection of their habitats. On our journey through the myth of the dolphins, we encountered a lot of new and special insights. Hopefully, we've brought closer a small part of what constitutes the fascination of dolphins. We also hope you now see these animals in a different light. Everybody can participate in animal protection. Support your favorite animals. Help others to help. So in the end, we all have an Earth where there's enough room for man and animal.